Greetings guys, it's Irish here. So, I've had very interesting Linux, um, I guess, issues these last couple days. So, I was on Gen 2 for about three years now, and I did leave it for a couple months a little bit ago, and then the whole COVID thing happened, and then I'm like, okay, I probably still have some time to maintain Gen 2. Since I've gone back to work in my office, I found out that I just don't have as much time now, especially uh, with my kids getting older, them starting school and stuff like that. I just don't have time to maintain um, Gen 2. Um, that's the main reason. The second reason is there are some hardware issues, I guess. Uh, my network manager would completely disable itself and then I would have to restart the service every now and then just so I can get back online. Now it didn't happen enough where like logs no logs showed anything out of the ordinary I thought um, so I thought it was time uh, there's other things like that. Um, there's a game on Steam called uh, Stardew Valley. And to mod that game, I uh, have to install something called Snappy. And for whatever reason, that did not install. It just would not install, the, and I couldn't play with my mods with that game. Um, so I had to move on. My... I was planning on going to Slackware. So Slackware has been interesting me for at least two years now. I did have a couple videos on it. I did, on a spare laptop, move to Slackware and it felt really comfortable. However, that laptop did not have EF, UEFI, so I got it installed, went to create a mirror, uh, but f it just, I don't know if it's because it is using the 4.4 kernel, but my Wi-Fi card was not registering. I made sure of that by um, doing that again with the 14.2 ISO, and it will not show up when I, if, if you type in the IP add or for the IP address. So it does not show in 14.2. I am planning really soon to try to see if it is registering with the uh, Slackware current. Because Slackware is very interesting. I feel like it's in between like an Arch and a Gentoo where it's got the binary packages but you still have to con kind of compile majority of their stuff so there's not as much control uh, with it but it's I think it's like a good middleman uh, between Arch and Gentoo. So the next thing I was planning on doing is Arch. Now I haven't been keeping up with the Arch news or anything but their ISO has changed. Normally, whenever I installed Arch, I used uh, what was built into the ISO was called Wi-Fi Menu, or Wi-Fi Dash Menu. That is no longer in there, and I have to do something like, uh, I forget, it's like IW something. I think it sees my Wi-Fi card. It does have WLAN. I did a LSPCI on it, and it does inst or it does uh, load the modules for it, but with the current ISO, I cannot uh, do it through Wi-Fi, and that's what I have to because my router is downstairs. I need, if I'm going to change, uh, if I'm going to change this, I was I was going to do it through Wi-Fi. So I'm like, okay, a lot of people in my Discord and talking on my IRC have done a lot of praises towards Manjaro. So I put Manjaro Architect on it, try booting into the Wi-Fi, or uh, 
to the USB stick and it said it was a bad uh, it dropped me straight into a grub rescue which was really odd and I think I tried doing that with the Manjaro XFCE like the default Manjaro ISO also uh, I'm gonna try that again just to see so I was trying to find an ISO or a, a distro that could because at that time I was worrying that maybe my Wi-Fi card is actually going bad and I need to replace it um, I was talking with Das Gregor uh, for a good bit with it he might he also th is thinking that it's probably going bad I've been on well Fedora I was about to get to it so for a couple days and the Wi-Fi has not gone out so I'm like out of curiosity I needed a distribution that actually had a live CD so I chose Fedora I thought about Mint but Fedora's I it's been a while since I've done it so I installed Fedora 30 and then upgraded it to Fedora 32 as you see here it's been a long time since I've ever used GNOME and I cannot stand it. I have installed Xmonad on here. However, not all my apps work straight out of D menu. So I have installed like a Discord, I have installed Dropbox and it is not showing up inside D menu. I'll have to figure that out and then I'm also I'll show this to you here still on bash so any other distribution that I've ever been on I all I did was a change shell dash s and then bin zsh because I love Z, uh, the z shell but when I do that it says z shell is or uh chsh to change shell command not found I talked to some people inside the Fedora IRC and they're saying to make sure that the user slash bin is in my path it is it's still not finding this change shell so if anyone else knows of a way to change the shell, I think I saw online where I can like user mod it, but maybe, but I'd rather do it this way. It just seems faster this way. Uh, again, and again, it's been a while since I've used GNOME, but it's, I tried to install the GNOME tweak tools here under the extensions I have installed a ton of them but they are not enabling I don't know why uh, that's the case so uh, let me come back to this but at least it has some of my stuff from my font uh, my fonts and my icons because I have the e-papyrus icon theme which is what you see here so I will have to figure out some of this. I am still going to try to get either Manjaro or Arch. Probably Void, but I'm going to see about Slackware. I want to try to go to a distribution that is systemd free. I, the only reason why I'm on Fedora right now is to get my uh, a computer system up because this is how I unwind is to watch like YouTube and uh, play Steam games which that's what I've actually been doing for the last month I've been really lazy doing videos and stuff like that and I do apologize but I've been playing a lot excuse me um, during the whole Steam uh, summer sale I got a bunch of games one of them being Celeste and I was playing that for a good while and I beat that it's not as hard as people make it out to be, but I am starting to redo, redo it and do the, like the uh, the B and the C sides. So, but I think P 
people are saying that Celeste was hard without those because they're saying if you need extra challenge, you have to be in the seaside. But I didn't think it was that hard. It didn't really, you know, piss me off like a lot of games do. So, but yeah, I just wanted to make a video. It's been a good month, if not two months, since I've made one. Uh, I will maybe try playing around with this. It's been a while since I've used Fedora. I think the last Fedora one I used was 26, so it's been at least um, 24, 25 maybe. There's a video of me uh, doing like an Arch install, and then I think I do like a Fed Up um, with it, so upgrading Fedora. But yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, being on an RPM uh, base. Uh, I'm still trying to get Spotify and MPV. Spotify, it's not in the repo, so I may have to try to learn Flatpak. I don't like Flatpak. Or the other one, I, I don't even know what that is. I prefer doing it through like the AUR or through Source. They should be in, the, in every uh, repos, but not. they're making a heavy move towards that. Another reason also why uh, I was getting off uh, Gen 2 was they're forcing everyone now to use Login D, which is part of the System D. To me, and I feel like some others, I feel like they're slowly not giving us as much choice uh, with inside the Linux uh, ecosystem. So when I first came in, there was like system, sysv, or openrc, systemd, and people were still really up in arms with the whole systemd thing. I was clueless of that, and I was on systemd for a long time until I tried Gentoo. Openrc is really well made. It gets out of your way you don't really do a whole bunch and if in anything happens like a heart bleed or something there's not a one system that will completely mess up your system and I've done a little research not a whole lot but that's what I see with system D is it does a bunch of stuff and if any one of those things goes away or is infected or they find a security flaw then your whole system is pretty much you know bricked for the most part hackers could get in and stuff like that so I feel like when OpenRC is getting away from the login services and you're forcing people now to use login D which is part of system D that's just giving you less choice in the matter Again, I could be completely wrong in that assumption, but that's how I feel and a couple other people that I've known, they share that kind of uh, thing. So I'm going to uh, hold out as much as I can because I feel like if System D is the, the one and truly own, uh, you know, in its system, then a lot of people might go to, to uh, the BSDs. I would love to go and try maybe FreeBSD or OpenBSD, but my network card, I tried several BSDs a few months back and none of them read my my uh, Wi-Fi card. So I'm unable to do it at least on my laptop, uh, at least at, at this point. I'm sure hopefully the kernel will get it. Uh, just to show you what my Wi-Fi card looks like, I'll do a IP add. It is the WL01. So uh, let me do an LS mod. Let me show you what this looks like. Wow. I don't real. Uh, so it's the IWL Wi-Fi. So that's the things that uh, a lot of the stuff isn't working. Um, but Luckily, Fedora did, so I can get a working system. So uh, I was trying to make this a quicker video, but apparently I was rambling a little too much. But 
Uh, I do plan on uh, getting back into the videos now. Uh, I have been lazy, and again, I do apologize with that. So, but um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of uh, my move, and maybe I will try Void or Slackware or something like that, because you know they don't use uh, System D as of right now. But again, who knows if that will change in the future? So, but uh, you guys have a good week, and I'll catch you later.